Hi, Michael. Thank you for participating in our new university's weekly pitch interview. How are you today? Very good. Can you tell us more about your work, The Messiah Triangle? Uh, well, the work um, is intended to look at the kind of triangle between Judaism, Christianity, Islam, but as well um, Palestine, Israel, and the United States and the kind of relationship between the three of them. Um, there's actually a book by Noam Chomsky actually about the, the triangle between the three of them, which I've, I haven't read, but you know you could you could point to that as something that inspired it. And also um, through that, looking at a particular human being, Giuliano Mercamis, who was an actor and activist who was both Palestinian because of his father and Israeli and Jewish because of his mother. So I thought that was a really interesting kind of conflict. What inspired you to create this piece of work in the medium of a film? Well, I'm a filmmaker, so that's, you know, by medium, but um, at the same time, uh, you know, this person, Giuliano Mercamis, was himself an actor, and I think so much of what he did was about trying to understand how to perform specific parts of his own personality, whether it was, what does it mean to be an Israeli, how do you perform being an Israeli, what does it mean to be um, a Palestinian, what does it mean to be called an Arab, what does it mean to take those film roles in the 1980s, so a lot of this is about performance and what it means to perform, so film was a kind of natural medium for that. I think this could also um, find some kind of life as a play, right, but I think performance was the, the, key, the key part of this. Gotcha. And in the film, you introduced the character Giuliano Maracamas. What is the significance of this character? Why him? Well, he's a real person. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's an existing human being who was assassinated in 2011. Um, he was raised uh, in Israel, right, um, by a, a Jewish Israeli mother, but he also had a Palestinian Christian father. And he, like every Israeli, went to the military, was a uh, paratrooper in the IDF, right? So. After that, later in life, he becomes more interested in his kind of Palestinian identity and he starts to work in Janine, right, which um, is part of the occupied territories where he starts a theater called the Freedom Theater where he teaches kids to kind of deal with their trauma through performance, right? So he is literally the embodiment of a conflict, right, between Palestine and Israel. I am from Israel. I was born there. I lived there until I was eight years old. I have a lot of family there. So it was really great for me to find a human being that kind of embodied a conflict, that might be an interesting thing to explore in an art. And uh, going back to the making of the film, what is your favorite moment when uh, creating this project with your team members? I mean, honestly, I think every day was an amazing experience because the, the nature of how we did this process was, you know, there was a script, there was a kind of situation, um, there was an environment where we could kind of push against the script. Um, and then everything that happened in there became the film. So the, we didn't shoot it in a conventional way where you would have one line, do a, a shot, go over the shoulder, do it a, you know, an opposing shot, do a close up, move out to a wide shot. We actually shot for 25, 30 minutes at a time with four cameras going simultaneously because there's something about the kind of flow of actors and performance that you just don't get when you do one line at a time. So to me, that was my favorite thing is that you got a lot of unexpected things that you wouldn't otherwise get. Did you face any hardships when creating this project? Yeah, I think just uh, deciding to do this project. This is a very personal project to me. It's very close to my heart. It has a lot to do with my own history and my family's history. Um, and I think it's very difficult to articulate something about a subject that's so fraught with conflict. Um, and so it took me a very long time. I mean, I was working on a PhD for six years and did an MFA for three years where I was doing research on this topic because I wanted to talk about it, but I didn't know what to say without either sounding like an idiot or saying something that had already been said in an uninteresting way. And what do you want the audience to get out of experiencing uh, your project? Um, I think it's important for the audience to uh, have an encounter with the piece that's based on the problems that it introduces um, and to understand that the problems are complex and nuanced and that most of the attempts that people make at offering answers are usually um, pretty flat-footed and result in answers that are one-dimensional and I think oversimplified. So you could say Israel is bad because of the occupation of Palestine, or you could say, you know, uh, Palestine is bad because uh, their con Palestinians are constantly firing rockets into Israel. I mean, these are stories and narratives that are taken up by each side. 
right? Mm. Um, and I think they're too simple. They're oversimplified, and I don't think they actually represent the true nuance of what it means to be from that region, which is you can have an emotional attachment and you can also think that there are things going on that are wrong. And those two things can exist in conflict without any resolution. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in that complexity and nuance and the conflict of that. And lastly, if you can change one thing in this world, what would it be? Uh, people's attachment to oversimplified identities, right? The reduction of nuanced complexity into very simple, one-dimensional answers. I think that's a problem. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you for your time. Thank you. And um, I appreciate your time being with us. Great, today. I appreciate it.